Excellent. Well, uh, for, thank you for inviting us to talk. We are thrilled to be part of this meetup tonight. Um, uh, also thrilled to see so many people here tonight and so many people who are interested in usability. Uh, obviously, Brent and I are super passionate about this stuff. We've been uh, innovating and working on our usability lab here at Meetup for probably four or five years. And every quarter, we really make it a, we make it a point to try and figure out how we're going to radically innovate on the things we're doing and make them better and better. Um, and so I think we've built a pretty interesting thing and really happy to share it with you guys tonight. Um, also, periodically, Brenna and I, uh, actually very frequently nowadays, people keep coming up to us and asking us for uh, insight on how we do it. So uh, that's actually why we invited uh, somebody to videotape us tonight so that we can share it more broadly. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to all go into the, we'll go into the why, the how, uh, the how it fits into our process, and then we'll take questions. So if you've got awesome questions, it will not only help the people here in the room, but it might help somebody in some far corner of the world uh, at some point soon. So I'm Andres Glusman, this is Brenna Lynch. Uh, I head up strategy, product, and community. I oversee those teams here at Meetup, and Brenna is responsible for our usability lab, which I think is awesome. Um, and let's just get right in. So uh, to kick it off, let's talk a little bit about the why. I don't think I have to work very hard to convince the people in this room as to why usability is important, but I'll tell you why we invest so much into it. Um, and the reason we invest so much into this usability lab um, is because we believe very strongly in the fact that in the world, and in product development in particular, there is a syndrome. It is, it is a bias. It is called the, the Malkovich bias. Um, and it is the tendency to believe that people use technology the way you do. So you, if you remember the movie Being John Malkovich, where everyone is John Malkovich, um, when it comes to using technology, we all tend to believe that everyone uses technology in the exact same way that we do. So if you have an iPhone, you can't imagine that anyone would use a droid. Right? It feels weird and foreign. If you use Gmail, it's kind of one of those things where every conversation is threaded. If you never have clicked on a, if you don't ever click on an ad, you can't believe that anyone does. Um, and really when it comes down to using technology and the reason why product development, one of the reasons why product development is so hard uh, is that we all bring our Malkovich bias to whatever we're working on. And the good news is that there's a cure. Uh, and the cure to the Malkovich bias is simply watching people use the stuff you build solves for the Malkovich bias. Because it really changes the conversation from how do I use something and how do you use something to us both talking about how does she use something. And that's an objective conversation. That's a rational conversation that we can get through. Um, and that actually we can both look at something in the same way and have a really interesting productive conversation with. So when we've designed this program here at Meetup, uh, our usability lab, the number one thing we're optimizing on is making it super simple for us to shorten the amount of time between anyone wondering how would somebody react to something and actually watching them react to it. And that's as interesting and as big as our program has gotten over the years. It really comes back to this one simple kernel. Um, and it's all about that. And so as you maybe are going to create your own usability lab and your own companies or work on it for your various projects, it really need not be more complicated than simply making it as easy as possible for people to watch others use the stuff you build. So with that, I'm, I'll hand it over to Brenna. We'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the how. Okay. We'll go back. All right, so in order to meet that goal that Dre was just talking about, about shortening the time between the, the concept developing of an idea and having someone actually interact with it, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what we do at Meetup. I wanted to point at this for some reason, and I might do that over and over again. OK, so the first thing is we test. We have users come in to test out things on Meetup very frequently. Um, almost every day of the week, Tuesday through Friday, it's pretty much guaranteed that somebody will either come in or log in to test out whatever ideas we're looking at. Um, and so because of that frequency, we're on pace to do um, at least 400 sessions this year. So that's 400 individuals, either Meetup members, organizers, or people who have never seen Meetup before, who are getting the chance to tell us what they think about, what they're, about our ideas and actually interact with them before our eyes. Next, um, so these people that we have coming in, we recruit them from the community. So that means we are getting members and organizers just from our database of people who use Meetup and also through Craigslist. That's for people who, to our knowledge, have not used Meetup before and maybe haven't even heard of it. Next, we set up tests prior to knowing what will be tested. So for example, tomorrow I have some people coming in and I have some idea of the things that I might show to them. but. It's pretty flexible, so I'm sure that something will come up in the morning that I didn't necessarily plan for, but that I have the people in to test it out. Next, 
uh, we test everything. So everything user-facing gets tested at different stages. So it's really great that you guys all use Meetup, so you know that you get emails from Meetup. You also might use the Meetup app. You might check out the Meetup blog. All of these things are shown to people before we actually launch them and iterated until we feel like they're in a really good shape. Next, anyone can request to have something tested. So anybody on the Meetup team, whether it be, usually you might think of, OK, the designers, the PMs, engineers, they'll probably have some ideas to test out. But we also test out a lot of things from, for example, the community team. If they have a special coaching email that they want to send out to organizers or um, a change that we want to make to our help section, that's something that we would also test out. So it's really open to whatever ideas somebody in the company has. Next, while we're actually having a session, we use GoToMeeting to broadcast the session to designers, PMs, developers, basically whoever is kind of a stakeholder in the project, whoever worked on it and is curious about how it actually performs in testing. And to elaborate on this point, I'm going to sort of go through this step-by-step -step sort of experience to show you what happens in a session. So, oh wait, but, but first, we follow each session with discussion and notes and video. That's a really important thing well, um, after each session. My goal is to try to get the findings out as quickly and efficiently as possible to whoever is involved. So hopefully for the next session or the next day, we can iterate and have a different version ready for people to look at. So now let's look at, so here I am, I'm sending an email out about a session happening at 3 p.m. I tell people basically what we're looking, what we're going to test out. As you can see here, we test out several things with each person. And um, we, I send out the GoToMeeting ID. And then I also invite people to IM me or chat in our IRC so it can be a little bit more interactive. Uh, we always, it's fun to test different things with people and we generally try to find a nice flow that is logical and makes sense. Um, this one actually is out of order. I don't know why I did it that way, but usually, for example, if someone's reading an email, we like to put that earlier in the session because maybe they're tired at the end and it's a little bit harder to focus on reading an email. Um, so let's go to the actual test. Here I am with my tester. And just for context, let's imagine that we're going to be, in this situation, we're testing out um, these palettes, color palettes for a meetup group. And that means, um, I don't know if any of you have noticed that certain meetup groups will um, have looked different recently. We launched a set of, I see some nods here, we've launched a set of um, color, uh, I don't even know how to describe it without using the jargon, um, different themes basically is what we call them um, that have different pre-configured colors that you can apply to your meetup group. So here I, am, here I am with an organizer and we're looking at these palettes, trying to see, well, what does she think? Does she, how would she use them for her group? What would she do if she came to her group and saw that she had new palettes available? So while this is happening, I've got GoToMeeting on, and I've got some engineers, designers, um, uh, PMs, just watching and seeing what happens. So here's her reaction. Well, I, I thought there would be more palettes. And the great thing about our system is that as soon as she says that, um, the people who actually chose the number of palettes and designed it are hearing that feedback immediately. And the, one of the really fun parts about our process is that while all of this is going on, here is an official transcript of a real conversation that happened between me and Andres during a session um, where people basically just IM me whatever thoughts come to mind. So Dre is sort of talking to himself a little bit, oh, and you know, reacting, and then also he has questions. So how many palette options was she hoping to find? And this is really great for me because I can just read it out loud and Sometimes people, it's funny, um, some of the engineers who have been, ha had that experience of having me read a question, almost they feel like I'm sort of their puppet or something, and like would I just read out anything that they said, which is not true. Um, I have some filter, <laughs> filtering mechanism in my brain. Um, and then, um, so yeah, also just sort of follow-up questions or if they didn't hear something. This is also great when there's a bug. We have so many prototypes that are in a very fragile state when we test them out, and that's awesome, but sometimes they just don't work. And I'll say, sure, you can click on that button, and then they do and nothing happens. But actually, the secret of that is then you can ask them, what did you think would happen? And then they're designing your product for you. Um, so after this test, I go to the engineers, and um, we have a chat. Usually, I try, like I said before, I try to go see them pretty frequently after a test or after a couple tests. And so I told them they, um, the testers wanted more palettes. And this guy's saying, oh, well, actually, there are more palettes, but the scroll bar is designed in such a way that you can't really see that you have more. So maybe we can increase the contrast on that scroll bar so people can have a better experience and see more of the palettes. And then um, a couple hours later, I have a new version to test out. 
And so then the process continues. So this. This you have probably seen before. This is our rig. It was in the Meetup event description. And you can see it upstairs in its natural habitat later if you're interested. But this is uh, how we test out things on mobile devices. Testing um, our apps and our mobile web experience and anything on mobile is really important at Meetup. And this is an amazing rig that kind of exemplifies how lean our process is. I always forget the exact number. Is it $27 or $23 or $25? Okay, $26. This is how much this um, whole system costs. This is the sheen of electrical tape that you're seeing here. And it's um, very easy to use. And the, um, what, this is a camera. So what happens is the tester is interacting with this as if it's their phone. I'm going to click that red button there. And what you see on our computer in our testing lab is this. And so what, what is amazing about this is that you can see someone try to drag this menu and maybe they'll try to tap on that or click upcoming, you can just see their gestures. And that's really amazing when somebody tries to do something that you didn't think they would do. And then you can see their gestures and think, oh, well, if they want to edit their profile, they want to tap on the intro instead of clicking the edit button. And so then um, we can sort of follow their lead and how they're using it. So how does all this fit in with design? Um, we test so many designs at Meetup because we, here's an example of our new find, explore experience on Meetup. Basically, if you click find a Meetup group, or actually if you just enter meetup.com and you're not logged in, you see something like this. Um, this is a new experience that we built that we're really proud of and exemplifies how important beautiful design is becoming to us at Meetup. We're making it a really, one of our top priorities to make using Meetup elegant and beautiful and fun. Um, see here we have pictures and all sorts of different controls and um, in order to get here, we do a lot of testing with things that do not look as good as this. We test some pretty not so good looking things. And I can say that because you'll see that I designed some of them. So I'm going to just show you, um, exemplify one of our principles, which is that no mock-up is too crude to user test. Um, so here is a series of mocks that we have really tested. And I put them in order of crude to polished. And I'm just going to briefly go through each one to tell you a little bit more about why they look the way they do and how they worked for us. So, and they'll expand a little bit. So the first one here, this is, an, this is that find experience, meetup.com slash find. This is just a field of buttons that we put in here. And basically we're trying to figure out, well, what are people interested in? What would they, are they, what, which of these buttons would they click on? And this is really terrible looking and um, we wouldn't actually design it like this, but people just sort of, you know, took it for what it was. And when I asked them, well, you know, if you were just at home, typed in meetup.com, went to find, which of these do you think you'd click on first? It's really amazing the conversation you can have if someone says, oh, most popular. Then you can ask, well, what's important about most popular? What do you like about that? And you can just dig a little bit deeper into what their desires are, what they like. And the fun thing about this is, like I said before, you can ask, well, what does it look like when you click on most popular? And then they're sort of designing it for you right before your eyes. Um, so this, and also this is, a, this is better for us than saying, you know, without showing the visual, would you rather click on most popular or fastest growing? Because that's just a little bit harder, in our opinion, to really imagine yourself interacting with. That's more of an intellectual question, whereas this is, what do you want to do first? And the, fun, the amazing thing is that a mock like this, to me, it just looks really bad, but testers will actually try to click on things. Even if you tell them this is not interactive, this is just an image, they'll still just try because they're, they're really good at putting themselves in their own shoes. Um, so let's look next on the continuum. This is a step in our create a meetup group flow. And we were thinking, what if we create a step where you can invite people to join your meetup group? So this is something, again, I made this, so I can say it looks really bad. But the, one of the principles that we applied here is just stealing stuff from other places on the meetup site. So these buttons for inviting people via Yahoo or Gmail, they, I just found them under some buried promote step on a meetup group. Facebook, who knows where I got this logo, but those are everywhere. These are all Meetup employees. So it's really, um, we just wanted to create something really fast. It didn't have to look good, but we wanted to just get opinions on this as soon as possible. And again, this was one of those things where people interact with it, they just accept it for what it is and um, had really good feedback that we iterated on for the next step. So moving on, something a little bit more polished. This is something that for the most part, is um, it's worked on by our designer. We think it looks really beautiful. 
This area is sort of cobbled together. This is, you may recognize this from your homepage when you type in meetup.com and log in. There's a little calendar. So, and then here we just have some controls that are copied and pasted from some sort of wireframe software. Like, I don't know, even know, but it looks kind of hand-drawn. But the point is here that we're just trying to get people to see, to tell us more about how would they use these controls? Or would they use these controls? This is for choosing the time that you want to search on. This is for filtering the, your search results by day. Do we, are, it's just sort of getting a sense of how interested people are and how excited they are to actually interact with this. And then finally, this one is a little bit better. It's a lot better, actually. This is one of our, one of our PMs designed this. This is an email you would get after you go to a meetup. So maybe after tonight's meetup. Um, in, the in the user test, I would say, all right, well, you went to this UX meetup last night. What if you got an email like this afterwards? What would you do with it? And then um, the great thing about this is that we can customize it for the tester and actually put in information, put in their name, put in the actual meetup they attended. And then even though this doesn't work, um, the amazing thing about testing something like this out on an iPhone is that we can just save it as an image and download it into the camera roll. Then the tester actually has the image on the phone in front of them. And if we have different versions, they can swipe through the versions on their camera, phone, on their camera roll and say, um, OK, out of the four versions, uh, this one's the best one. Then we can talk about why. So it's always really good to have them compare different things. And so anyways, no mock is too crude. Bad mock-ups that I made, even great mock-ups. We test everything, and we get really amazing results from it. So on to you. So let's talk a little bit about how this uh, usability lab and our usability fits into our overall product development process. So uh, the best way to do that is just to tell you a story about a recent thing we launched uh, and how it came to be in the role usability played. So when you created a meetup group, this is what it used to look like. Every single one of the over 100,000 meetup groups in existence, the organizer went through this five-step flow that looks like it's straight out of 2003, uh, but, and it's got all the charm of a tax form. But uh, we, um, you know, this was the experience before. We ran usability on it. We basically knew where people, where their challenges were, where they struggled. We had quantitative data from our quant team in terms of knowing how long it took where, uh, per page, where the fall-offs were. So we were armed with a fair amount of insight into the experience, and we were uh, you know, just sort of chatting with our designer uh, at the time, and we were talking about like, some dreaming up some possibilities of what it could become. And that night, he went home, got inspired, and came back the next day with, with something that looked something like this. So next morning, he comes in. He's like, hey, Drake, I want you to check this out. So I go over and to his desk, and he's got this working prototype uh, that he hacked overnight, and it's uh, not even on the Meetup site. And actually, do you want to go ahead and demo it? So we'll actually give you a live demo of what it looked like. So um, it was completely divorced from the Meetup site, not on our code base. It's just a simple JavaScript prototype. And it's, uh, it looked like this, basically. So you come to it, and you say, what's your name? My name is not Brenna, but let's pretend. My, na oh, my name is Andres. Yeah. And I want to start a Meetup about, let's say, outdoors and uh, adventure. Up top here, let's click on that one. Boom. And then let's uh, say it's going to be about uh, camping, hiking, and ad adventures. Click Next. I want to name it. Uh, I want to name it The Awesome Hikers of NYC. Because we are in NYC and we are awesome. And then boom, you get fireworks. <laughs> so, uh, you know, very simple prototype, interesting experience. Looks nothing like the experience you saw there. Um, and I saw it, and I'm, I'm, I'm an easily excitable guy, so I got very excited about it. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. We've got somebody coming in for usability testing in an hour. Let's just drop it in. So I pinged Brenna and said, hey, Brenna, do you think you can get this in for the next usability session? She said, sure. She drops it in, and we watch somebody go through the experience. And what do you think happened? And if you've seen this before, no, no commenting. But uh, what do you think happened? You think they loved it? Any other ideas? Uh, that's pretty much exactly what happened. So they, 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 um, they got super confused early on because the person was uh, trying to create a meetup group for a certain kind of person and just couldn't figure out how to fit into our taxonomy. But they really leaned in and got excited about the way that the experience unfolded in front of them. And so we knew that there was something really interesting there, but the way that we uh, had uh, stitched together the experience was not quite right. So we had a conversation about it, and our, our, you know, the designer 
uh, who just you know, can hack the stuff overnight, basically kind of did, did iterative loop, iterative step after iterative step, and eventually got to something that looks a little bit more like this. Can you click on the next tab? So eventually it got to something that looks a little bit more like this, where it, uh, there's a step up front, tells you a little bit more about what you're experiencing. Uh, he happened to just grab a video that uh, we use for other things. Let's go ahead and name that group. And we know that people tend to have some challenges in terms of being creative, so we threw in this thing here with, with check out some examples so that Brenna could copy them, but she's got her name down right now, so we don't need to. And, uh, and she's being perfectionistic, which is cool. And then we got, where are we? We're in New York. I'm perfectionist. Yes. <laughs> and let's keep with the hiking theme. There we go. Let's you can go ahead and skip over that. Okay. But this is one of the more challenging areas, and then boom, we let you know how many people we'll invite, which was a key component of, of uh, uh, why a lot of people are afraid to start a group. They don't realize how easy it is to get members to join their group on Meetup. So we basically arrived at an experience that looked like this, and that was um, we felt really good about it. It was consistently testing well. People were excited, and then we went back to. Can you go back to the presentation? So then we went back to, our, uh, to the experience that we had. And cool. And said, all right, let's start carving up some experiments. How do we, how do we go from this new vision that we have to actually understanding if that we think is really likely to work very well to actually uh, implementing it on the web? And so we carved it up into a series of experiments. And sure enough, the first one did really well. Uh, and so we, that gave us a lot of confidence to go ahead and create a second and third, and eventually we completely redesign the experience. Um, while iterating each step of the way, we basically would see how people used it and the response rates and fine-tuned it, but we basically arrived at an experience that looks a lot like this. And if you go to Meetup uh, and click on the Create button up top, or the Start button up top, you're going to basically walk through this brand new flow. Um, and this flow and this process has generated a 50% improvement uh, in group starting, which is great, because more groups equals more Meetups. And that also is how we get paid. So it's a very good thing for everyone involved. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the, the core of, of, a, of a, an example of it working out really beautifully. And that's actually with all of our projects um, what we try to emulate. Um, and so the, the, the result of it all is that like, with our designers and such, and when people come to Meetup and, and the new folks who join, they're kind of blown away with it. Because ultimately, this usability testing program really liberates designers. It frees them from having to imagine how people would respond to, to the things they're trying to solve, because really the, the designers that work at Meetup, uh, first and foremost, are problem solvers. And so they want to know and get insight into the kind of the how is it that people are experiencing these problems so they can come up with really interesting and novel new solutions. Um, so want to arm you guys with the ability to be able to do this for yourselves. We've been iterating and uh, you know, improving and constantly improving, constantly improving. But these nine principles are actually something I published about like four or five years ago. Um, and they're still the core of what we do today. And so I'll share them with you guys, uh, and then we'll take questions. So the first principle uh, is learn to love error. Most, the history of usability, and the reason why it costs $32,000 to have eight sessions done for you in a lab somewhere in Connecticut, is because people foolishly think they can eliminate error from, from the testing process. And that is not true. That lab in Connecticut is full of its own biases and error and problems. Uh, but all it does is drives up the cost and makes everything much more difficult to do at scale. So we believe that having somebody do usability testing in a conference room is just as cool as having somebody do usability testing in a lab with a two-way mirror, um, but it's a whole lot cheaper and allows you to do a whole lot more interesting things. And ultimately, like when, when we first, went, you know, a few years ago, we took a round of investment from, uh, from Union Square Ventures, and Fred Wilson came by our office and he asked me, you know, we talked about the program, and he asked me, well, aren't you worried about there being a New York bias? And I said, no, I'm not. Because uh, ultimately, what we're just looking for is boulders in the road. We're looking for problems that are so obvious, like what we saw in that example, where somebody just couldn't figure out how to get through. And we're also looking for excitement that's natural, like when people lean in and when they get excited. And it's obvious. It doesn't matter if you're in New York or Poughkeepsie or wherever. Um, it is obvious when you're, when, where the boulders in the road are. And if you're working really hard to, through usability to try and not find the obvious problems or the obvious things that people are excited about, you're probably working on the wrong things. All right, the next big thing is because there's so much error and we don't care, we substitute uh, precision for frequency. So we do so many tests 
that if there's a bug in one test, it doesn't matter because there's somebody coming in an hour and a half later who is going to uh, probably not have his buggy in experience because hopefully the developer fixed that bug in the time. <laughs> you know? Or uh, if somebody doesn't show up, there's still going to be somebody later on. Like any, if there's the wrong tester that comes in, it's not a big deal. Everything that you want to try and plan for and nuance you want to try and eliminate uh, through upfront planning uh, because you're afraid of error, if you just learn to live with it, you can go so much further and get so much more insight for so much less money if you substitute error for, for, for uh, if you substitute frequency for precision. All right. Um, part of all of this, obviously, the reason we can do 400 sessions instead of eight is because we've stripped out the costs. Um, and we basically think, are constantly thinking about how do we create a minimum viable process. The first time we ran, this, we ran our usability lab was an accident. We had somebody who happened to be in our office who wanted to, use our, our, who wanted to sign up for a beta program. And we gave them permission to jump to the front of the line if we could watch them use watch them set it up. And they had such a miserable experience setting it up that it convinced us that this is something really interesting. So simply, if you looked at the photos that Brenna showed of the usability test here, it's really not more complicated than a two people sitting in front of a computer screen having a conversation. Uh, we recruit. Uh, now we've actually, uh, over years, we've gotten better and better at, at, at recruiting. Um, but honestly, if I'd recommend to you, if you're starting off right now and you don't use usability at all, um, be prepared to go ahead and hire a recruiter. Like, there's recruiters you can pay 100 bucks to bring in the right person with certain criteria into your office at a certain time. Outsource that um, and worry about the other parts. Uh, get good at those things, which is what we did, uh, prior to worrying about recruiting, and then come back and figure out recruiting. Uh, basic moderation can go a long way. So Brenna is an awesome moderator, uh, and she can deal with IMs flying at her left, right, and center, um, and it make it sound like a total natural conversation. But um, it's really true that, that as long as you're not making some, as long as you're following some pretty simple rules of thumb, and I'd actually recommend taking a look at Stephen Krug, Krug or Krug, K-R-U-G, uh, take a look at, at, at his tips for moderation, um, you'll be fine. It's, it's really like you can get a long way, bad moderation, I'd say. Mediocre moderation is, is better than no testing. Don't let that trip you up. Um, obviously, the direct exposure to users is, is vital. So as good of a storyteller as I might be or a Brenna might be, we cannot come close to, to, to doing as good a job of conveying someone's pain or passion as, somebody, as, as just watching somebody experience something. Uh, and then finally, as Brenna pointed out, like, we take notes and we have discussions as rapidly as we can. Because ultimately, what we want to do is make it so that the next day, what we're testing is, we might be testing the same experience, but the experience has evolved rapidly. So if you're, we don't write reports because by the time we write them, we would hope the product, our report would be so obsolete because we will have iterated on that product so many times uh, that it won't even matter. So it's really all about very rapid conversations that we can have and note, uh, sharing notes for people who can't join in on the conversation.